He's oh. handsome, but this, you know. I, I ain't. Are you excited? I'm excited. I actually am excited about this. I'm stealing the short block out of the gray mare. Tens just aren't good enough. I mean, we might still go tens. Yeah, but it's a different ten. The 347 that's in the Trash Panda is okay. It was built with okay parts. I mean, it holds up to abuse. It does well. It went tens, but it, it's not our style. So I'm taking the short block from the mare and I'm going to build it my way. Now we're gonna get some trick flow heads for it. Big old trick flow can. We're going to make a lot more power with less Let cubic inch. Still a stock block. So with the mirror, we are going to go after the stock block record. We've already won the stock short block record with the mirror, but we're going to go after the stock block record now. So stock block record, I think, is a 496 or a 498. I actually think we can get pretty close to it with the stock short block, honestly. Huh? With a stock short block? With you driving and it tuned, tuned up a little bit? I don't know if we can do that. I don't trust it. <laughs> I think, I, think, I think we'll have parts in an engine diaper if we do that. This block that was in the mirror is 40 over and we don't really trust it with all the boost that we're going to put to it. So we want something that's a little closer to stock bore size. So we have more cylinder wall to hold all that boost in. That means I get a motor. Yay! We are on the way to Pettis Performance. So Pettis Performance, Jason Pettis, he is the guy that built the motor out of my black car. He built the motor out of Tony's Snowflake, which has not been on the YouTube yet. So most of you probably don't even know what that is. He builds a really good motor. He's super intelligent. He'll go off on a tangent of just numbers and information. And it's hard to take it all in because he's just so smart and he starts throwing numbers and words out there that... Yeah, he's just smart. He's, yeah, he, he has a lot of information <clears throat> in his head and he knows a lot. The motor that I had in my black car was together for three years. After the first year, we took it back to him and me and him tore it down, checked the, the bearings and everything looked good. The bearings looked like they were a little bit tight, so we put different bearings in it, but the whole motor has never had one issue for three years of racing it. We're gonna tear down the mare motor, check everything in there. We're gonna take the AFR heads off of it. We're gonna sell those, sell the intake off of there, and then Jason's gonna do the machine work. We yeah. have heads already on order, heads intake cam already on order from Trick Flow. So as soon as those come in, he's gonna put those all together. I don't know if we're gonna have the same valve clearance on the pistons with the new Trick Head. So we're going to have to check that out once the heads come in and we're going to make all the power and we're going to have a motor that's like... So it'll be a stage five. About 12 to one. 12, 12 and a half to one. I'm excited. This is the start of the new build for the motor that is going to help me be competitive at race week. We'll see you when we get there. Bye. Quick bit of information that we forgot to mention. When we decided to put the stock short block out of my car into the mare to go after the record, Tony loaned his 331 out of the mare to a friend of ours. The last pass that that friend made with that Motor. He spun right off the line, hit the limiter pretty good, and then made a full quarter mile pass. After that pass, there was a tick. So we're not just tearing the motor down for fun. We're tearing it down to figure out what that tick was, fix it, put it back together with new GoFast parts, and then get it in Trash Panda so I can go to race week with it. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Bye. Been hard to find. Ow. Jesus, what are you doing? Jesus. A hard time trying to find one of these blocks, but I'll find one. You really think it's that much stronger? Dude, this thing looks like this thing looks like the the apparatus that the dude used to kill people in No Country for Old Men. Oh, oh yeah, the the yeah paddle, the katunk thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it just comes right out. You get a nice dampener too. Not a too. setup, but it comes right out. Yeah. <laughs> Crank trigger and everything. Feeling it. The Jason. right stuff.
Jason's like, you guys should be against the wall. You're welcome. Yeah, you love the silicone. Oh, it's off. Would you look at all that? No broken parts yet. Look at the Mexicans, it's ground out of it. Me working on this thing is just getting in his way. Like, I get okay. this thing done a lot quicker. It's okay, I've known it for 20 years. I can get in his way a little bit. That's fine. That's fine, I don't need those fingers. I think I'm gonna take the heads, <clears throat> the heads and intake with me. That other one in the balcony. Got it. Cool. This thing's nice and long. Oh, I stole it. I'm sorry. Yeah, those those can work with the new motor. So I'm gonna keep those. I know shafts are better, but it just it just depends. I think you uh, you you did the valve angle on this seats and guides and everything on this on these Are heads. Throwing the lash caps in there too. You you did you set all this up. This is all you. That's why it was so good for so long. I'm telling you, he let off the trans brake, the unit came on, and it just immediately here? spun. Yeah. And I swear it went to nine grand because it hit the limiter, and the limiter was at nine grand. <laughs> Titanium. She's earning it. <laughs> She's gonna steal my motor. time ago to take the pan off this way because if you turn it upside down and there's oil in there you can yeah. never get all the oil yeah you can't do it and then it makes it oh, what it always does man it, is it goes to one of the pistons and then you're taking the piston out and if you're doing it by oh, yourself, and it just you, plops you, you, out you yeah with your knee and then the piston turns sideways and then your legs fall off. Oh, fingers so bad <laughs> i'm showing you it on the camera We've had some people in the comments that say, oh, this should make that. And it's like, this is our street motor because their other motor made 410 to the tire. But this one should make a lot more and it's going to be less cubic inches. I'm excited to actually dyno this one and like see. I could have just, you know, been there's a loose part on his car vibrating. I mean, if there's something wrong. We'll find it. You're going to find it. I'll find you. <laughs> He's Wait. handsome, but this, you know. I, I ain't in a hurry. I'm already getting it. Oh, look, there's a rock in there. Is that what it was? No. Oh, no, it wasn't a rock. This thing's serious. I wonder if it's like a wrist pin or... Could be a rod bearing. I mean, just because it doesn't lose all pressure that you can see, don't mean it's not killing yeah. the bearing too. Because I have run across that. Take the pistons out or whatever. Yeah, well... We'll pop the tea nuts out, I guess. Just want to take one off to check it out. Yeah. So if you take them off, like on the threads, they'll, they'll crunch the thread. The thread though. Um, so you just gotta take it off on the shelf. These ones have the little allens, but since this thing's out, we'll just try and... It's, it's locked now out. it's not gonna clutch, so just be ready. It should be kind of gnarly. 
You could do them all on that. Just, yeah. You just be, you know, don't grab a handful until you know that it's not good. Get up, get up all I will break my wrist, so. Yeah, you know, it'll, it'll get you. It's pretty, pretty strong. Some of the fillers do that after a while. It depends on chunks. What kind of filler it is. Some are worse than others. I mean, I could do a user wobble, but I don't have any out here. I'm too lazy to go get Damn, it. your wrenches are got a longer fulcrum than your damn nice. socket. Right. Socket wrenches. Actually, the older oh, ones were on, rounded. Isn't it? Yeah, the old ones were round in the middle, though. They were way better because when you can you yank on it, yank on it, it's a little more comfortable. It's not like it was a catastrophic failure. It just had a tick. I mean, you, I can't even remember how loud was it. It wasn't soft leak. I mean, they'll tick. No, it wasn't that. It could have been like a really bad exhaust leak, but it didn't sound like that. It was like coming from It sounded from the bad motor. enough to just not want to turn the car on anymore. Man, I've heard exhaust leaks that sound like it's got a rod like broken in half flinging, you know what I mean? Like, geez. Um, so let's see here, we gotta take, I mean, you can't uh, get that nut out. Well, let's see. I like. Yikes. Get a wrench on that son bitch. Oh yeah, there you go. Now you can use the ball socket. Yeah. Ball socket. Don't be weird. Mesh over it or something? Yeah, you, like a piece of screen over it yeah. attached somehow would probably be a good deal. Oh, geez. But just something to try to protect the, uh, oops. Sorry, I was that's trying to help, washers, but I didn't do yeah. anything. That's my washers to space it because it was hitting. Yeah. You know, I remember in the old days, like having a flip phone or whatever, and you leave, leave it in your car in the summer and the screen would turn black and you could put it in the- You had a flip phone until like three years ago. Yeah, no, I did. <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I remember back in the day oh. when I had a flip phone three years ago. <laughs> but if Fucking the screen black, you could put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, it and it would start working again. Not so, not so hot of a setup that way. Oh. I always do that. Of course. So yeah, it's a little. Oh, well, that's a little beat up. Not, not gonna make a noise though, that's for sure. No. Same with that one. I mean, yeah, it's, it's time a for little... fresh ones, but. This thing has been abused for a long time yeah, though. Yeah, it's never <laughs> really just been driven. It's been right. kind of hammered in. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah that... every time it's been turned on, it's been beaten up. That kind of, uh, kind of wearing a bearing. That one's still in the rod. It's the same thing. I mean, it's obviously time for new ones. But... So uh, at this point, so far, it's just re ring a bearing in the short block. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. And check new heads, make sure there's valve clearance. I can't believe you didn't show me that trick years ago. <laughs> the pulse is what? I think the clearances were like four thousand on this moment. Oh, wow. Uh, the one you, you said it. I mean, yeah. that's pretty loose, but... So the old saying is, if it's if the bearing clearances are loose, only you know. If the bearing clearances are too tight, everybody knows because the motor's broken, <laughs> yeah. the rods are hanging out of it. I mean, the biggest thing on like a street driver, daily driver deal is if you if you get the bearing clearances pretty loose, so mm -hmm. that's your problem. That's probably the noise. Oh no. The skirts, oh yeah. Oh that's, wow. That, that's the noise for sure, I could say. Okay, so it's more that, than three ring and bearing. That skirt got mangled enough to where that piston's making a bunch yeah, of noise. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. That's probably what it is. So, so that Man. can be, it, so. Is that gonna clean up now? Um, it's not terrible, sorry. It's hard to say, to some it. of it may be aluminum built up, right? Yeah. So it's not, oh, so, what, okay. so yeah, the, the, the couple things you can look at right away is. That did was it, just in the wall. Did, okay. it, uh, did it detonate, pinch a ring, or did the, did the facing of the ring start coming off or whatever? So if it detonated and pinched a ring, you wouldn't be able to just, the rings turn totally fine. So, and then if the ring face, like, I, I can't remember what kind of ring this is. It's probably a stainless steel ring, but if it's molly, you know, they, uh, it's like an iron ring and they put a coating of molly on the outside. And if the molly starts coming off, the debris will do this. But then you would, my finger would probably be bleeding by now if the molly was coming off. So the top it's ring- worse on the outside. The top ring doesn't have anything like that going on. Now the second ring, sometimes it's a, that's, that's a Napier ring. So it looks like a little, if you look at it really close, it's like a little hook, like a squeegee almost. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen the, 
the 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 bottom half of the hook if you like if you look at the ring it's got like a little instead of being rectangular it's got like a little undercut with a hook on it and that mm. little end i've seen break off sometimes get stuck in there and start mangling but again you'll feel it with your finger real quickly and i don't feel it do you think that it just revs so fast that it lost like there was no oil there and it just no. i've never seen it that's not the off train problem it, it, it like like you know like if you put it in neutral and wooded it and it revved up from 1500 to mm -hmm. 8000 and two tenths of a second like the acceleration that would that would normally be a valve train issue more than anything so it's not a stuck ring that caused it it's not a falling apart ring that caused it um it's not a stuck pin bore that caused it because the detonation it that moves that jerked it sideways and then no usually if it detonates bad enough it'll, it'll, it'll you'll, you'll, you'll you'll it'll either pinch a top ring yeah. like the ring is physically stuck or it would have there's burned a spark plug off very um there's no way it would detonate with 10 degrees, eight to 10 out for. So now the oil ring is stuck, but that can happen. Look, yeah, see it's how dented much the, right the there. piston is wedged up into yeah. it. Um, so that the oil ring being stuck probably happened after the fact, instead of causing it probably, because the, the oil rail support dimple is still visible. Mm -hmm. I've seen, like I've seen guys, they'll put the motor together I don't know how you do it, but I've seen people and do it. In, and the dimple is like the, over yeah. here. Oh, and, and the oil ring shouldn't fit. You'd have to jam it in. So that would usually stop people, but that doesn't. And then they'll put it together and then the ring is stuck and then it jams a bunch of stuff around the solar wall. But again, yeah, that would have happened like right away, right? It wouldn't have lasted. So another thing that'll cause this type of thing is water. If the head gas gets leaking, it's putting water in here. Water gets in between the skirt and the solar wall. It gets hot, it boils, turns oh, to steam, pushes all the yeah. oil out of the way, and then it starts to get metal to metal. So did it crack did it crack the block right there? Um well it could have been it could have it could be a cracked block or which we'll look at in a minute, or it could be a head gasket. Or it could be a cracked head too. I mean that's possible too. Or, or you know, head gasket leaking, um getting water in, but that's that is a possibility of, of, of that being caused by water. It's just weird that it's only on the edges. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it depends on the shape of the, the cam. They call the cam of the because this thing ain't round. It's it's usually they're oval, so usually they're wider here and they get narrower. But they're not always that way. Um, they definitely got hot. It burned oil and stuff, which makes sense. Yeah, um, I almost ate through it. the. And other I mean, side. if it was like, oh, it's not enough cylinder wall clearance or something, it would have this on all of them. You know, yeah, so once. it got hot after that run because it was only. Yeah. It's something to do with it accelerating fast and then going all the way. So, piston hit the head right there too. But that can be if this skirt got crushed a bunch too while this was going on. You know, it's you measure it, and if we measured it compared to one of the others, then now the piston's going to be able to rock more than normal, mm -hmm. and that would explain maybe why I come out and smack the cylinder head. Um, I didn't even look at the other ones to see if they have any evidence of touching. Yeah, maybe a little. Huh. It's close. So. It might be a little closer. It could have smacked it on that just that one run too. Yeah, but, that, I mean that that could maybe if it like rubbed. Maybe it rubbed it so high that it smacked it and then made it sideways. Possible. Enough. Yeah, dude, it was gnarly. I don't know that man. Like usually, if if the piston hits the head, see, it's not. It didn't hit it hard because it didn't leave. It just took a chunk off though. Well, that's too from that's off. debris. You can't really look at that one. Oh. Th that could be left yeah. over from that, but it didn't leave like a, a smashed. You know what it I mean? It just took you the carbon off. Feel it with a thumbnail. So that um, could that's some like squinch in there. Yeah, that's with that uh, big of a. I don't know that that would be too? enough. That's well, it probably on why if the piston's up above huh? deck or something. You know, that's probably why I put a thick head gasket on to get it. Yeah. I think he, maybe, I, I use whatever he told maybe me. Maybe the to piston's use. not flush with the deck. Maybe yeah. it's ten above. So then you got to run. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever it takes to get like forty thousandths clearance, and if it has less than that, it will hit. Yeah. Um, but so you know, if the motor's sitting here and you measure at TDC and the piston's sticking up a the little. same as the deck then you can run a 40 gasket but if the piston's sticking up say 10 then you got to run a 50 or say it's sticking up 20 you got to run a 60 or whatever i don't know that that hit hard enough to explain that but also that hitting can be caused from that because once this yeah. kind of gets crushed it flexes it rocks more than it which is the noise would. we heard and under normal circumstances the amount of rock it has isn't enough to let this come up and hit the head but once this changes size it could be but more than likely that's the noise but it could very well have been a water leak thing. Um, so, basically, it was piston flap. It wasn't. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless we find a spun rod bearing yeah. or something like that. But I mean, this would make noise. I mean, it very likely would make noise. So it's, it's uh, obviously that this is free and we'll have to look at the bore and have to shut this off and put it in the cracker. I mean, I mean, that's probably from the heat and shit, but it all, it, it got really hot. Look at it. You crack the pistol? Yeah. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Just because it got hot. Yeah. Oh, I mean, look how much it took off right there. And the heat transfer inside there. Yeah, yeah just from getting smoking hot. So, I mean, you can't necessarily see any evidence of water, you, which you yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. always, but, so, you know, sometimes you see like a bunch of corrosion from like, oh, yeah, there's, 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 the, there's there. the path. But it doesn't, you don't see that so much. Um, you probably won't see a crack with your bare eye. You kind of, but you yeah. will, you will when you magnaflex it. If, if, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it by, I wouldn't say, oh yeah, we look at the flashlight, it's not crack. You got to mag it. But also a lot of times you can see it with a flashlight, you know, and, and then you know, okay, it's cracked and, and it's, that's the problem. But, but yeah. We'll, we'll have to clean it and mag it, you know, once we get all the oil off it, spray and wash it. So that's we'll definitely, it. that's so, definitely the noise. I, I would say now. almost a hundred percent certain because we haven't seen anything else anyway. And, and that'll for sure make noise, you know, the piston will start flopping around. But what, what do you think caused it? And based on the fact that the rings aren't stuck, the faces, the rings aren't screwed up. It's probably water. It probably got water in it. So the head could be cracked, which, which would be number six. Which is what we so maybe I didn't pay attention oh. to which head gasket came from where. Yeah. But I don't know if we can see anything. It would have been this one if it was this side. I don't, I don't see anything. This is on the this head, head this gasket. This is the head side. So this is that, this is this side. Okay, that's that side head gasket. So it was yeah. that head gasket. I didn't see anything on that head gasket. So plus sixty. Man, they feel thicker than that to me. Just if, from hand. If it revved up, wow! And then he made a pass, and then that was almost the last time it ran. Like, how would water? It would have to be like steaming in there for that to happen, right? Because it washed. It, it got hot because there was no lubrication. Yeah. Because so the water gets in there. It gets in between the skirt and the cylinder wall, and then it gets blazing hot, and it turns to steam real quick. Yeah. And then the steam pushes all the oil out of the way. Yeah. And then it, it, not to mention water is helping a good lubricant. I mean, that's more than likely, I would imagine it's probably a water issue because there's just no other evidence of anything like a stuck pin bore will do it, a ring falling mm -hmm. apart will do it, but it's not got any of those things going on. Even the pin turns that way pretty easy. Piston to head contact, just I don't think so. Usually if the piston hits the head really hard too this way, it'll it'll kill this rod bearing before it does yeah. much anything else because it's Smash. smashing it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's not really got that going on either. And if it was something misassembled, like I was saying, like, you know, some madman put the dial pin and, yeah. you know, and, and put it, it would not have, it would have done this, you know, in the first hour, yeah, you know, it would like five years like later or whatever it was. Yeah. Together. And I think if, if it detonated, it usually is going to have damage in other, especially on gasoline. It's a little different on methanol. You can smash. You can smash a bunch of stuff without melting. So you can still melt on methanol, but you can smash a bunch of stuff up here without melting anything on an alcohol deal, but not so much on a gasoline. So I would say if it detonated bad enough to like, oh, it caused some kind of crazy pressure and caused the piston to jam into the cylinder wall, and it, it would have melted something up here, yeah. like for sure on gas. Like, it, might, it might be okay. It looks so. like this is just transferred. It looks like it's on. Like it raised, it's That's what not, it looked like to yeah. me. Most of its high well, spots, and like I say, aluminum if, softer than the you go to hone it, and, and if there's a few low spots, it's not that big. I mean, it I sounds kind of hokey and stuff, but that's just what I've noticed. It's just from messing with nitrous. Look what I got. Like yeah, <laughs> you mess with nitrous stuff long enough, and you'll have them um, like they'll have divots like like that go all the way down to here that are like this wide, because it'll start to push the cylinder, especially on the aluminum. Richwell had this happen all the fucking time. Yeah, um, and you, your cylinders were eight. And, 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 and it would get a big old dent right here. And I mean, you measure with a dial bore gauge, and I'm, that dent is like 20 thousandths deep. You can't hone it out, because you'd have to hone it. Oh yeah, because I remember the windows in it. Yeah, yeah and, and um, we'd like, and, you know, back in those days when PSA was running regular, it's like, well, I'm, you know, there's a race like next Friday. I ain't got time to sleep and stuff. So, okay, we're just gonna hone it and see. And he's like, man, it runs the same. Like there's no oil on the plug. It didn't lose <laughs> yeah, vacuum. He did, a, he did like a, I mean, that a leak down and it was like 70%. Yeah. And he'd 
fucking hit the nitrous and it would you run the yeah. same. Leak down test. On the motor, yeah. it, it leak down tests are very misleading anyway. But um but yeah, so obviously it's not ideal, but if if there's some scratches and some low spots that that you don't want to hone so much out that they're gone and now that's got way too much clearance or something. You just kind of, okay, we're going to put the same size piston and we're just going to freshen hone it. And if they leave some low spots, it's not that detrimental. I looked on the head, really there's, there's number two has like in the chamber, like, like it had moisture, but I could have just been from it sitting. Right. But yeah, you this didn't, one had water you, in it when it was sitting. Yeah. Everything looks good. I'm happy. So, yeah, that's, I, I would say that's. I'd rather have that than a nice. spun bearing, honestly. Yeah, 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 for sure. And like, I mean, it could have a spun main, but it's not going to make a noise, generally speaking, in my experience. You're not going to hear like a clunking from a I'm main. I'm happy with the rod bearings. Smoke. I mean. Right. That's another thing. I smacked it. The first time I took a bolt off of this thing, I smacked it. Here, it's already up. being mean to hold me. This up. Huh? Move it. Hold, it. hold this up and do the, uh, the camera. Yeah, this one's still together, unlike the other one. Handbrings, but we're not going to keep them in place, so no big deal. The, the play, but if you take the chain and like wrap it and hold it tight, sometimes like it's snug and it's loose, but this one's not. Sometimes you'll feel them, they're, they're like, you can't even move it, you know, like this one is that way. And then up here, you, you it'll flop back and forth because the chain's kind of well, like not the right mesh with the gear. Hmm. And some of the chain brands are worse than others. Stretched but this, this one's pretty tight all the way around. So it's, it's really good. good. It's probably a close. Hopefully it can be cleaned, honed. And then we'll get the heads and just, we'll have to cut the pistons. I mean, it, it can go back together fairly fast. It'll we'll have to be replaced. I'd put a bronze one in there anyway. It's got a pretty good amount of wear. Okay. But actually, you could put a Torrington one on if you wanted to. It's not a huge deal if you don't. For just just so it doesn't make debris so much is really the main reason why I didn't care. About and we are going to put an oil cooler on it. Uh, vibrant Performance sells a sandwich adapter to go on there. Okay. Yeah. So we're do that. Push it. Yeah. Special cam remover tool? Yeah. I actually have <laughs> some up there, but that I use when I'm putting them in for taking it out. Just, just, just kind of sharp for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's a little crunchy. It's all right. Oh, yeah. Which, that shouldn't happen with a bronze gear. Uh, usually not, no. Is there a possibility it got run with like an auto yeah, at one point? Yeah, 100%. Either. You can stake them all. Um, it's just good to know ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, just a little normal wear. Normal wear for the amount of time this thing's been in abuse, you know what I mean? But it's not. We've got any spun bearings and the thrust looks fine. With your fingertips. Oh my goodness. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it looks decent. Wow, that sucker's glued together, man. <laughs> it's a different, uh, is it a two-piece or is it, it has to be a two-piece. No, it's a, it's a, it's a two-piece seal, but I've never seen one glued together. So Maybe it's a one-piece, because I think I bought a one-piece for it. Some special. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you it, can see the seam. That's from the cap, probably. Being Maybe, there. yeah. Yeah, it's it is. Interesting. It's a one-piece. I mean, a one-piece, two-piece thing, yeah. One-piece, uh, because the block's not a one, it's a that's a two piece block, you know. It's not like a late model block, but and the, the I mean, you probably would mag the crank, you know, when it's getting cleaned and stuff, just cause. Yeah. But it's probably okay because usually if the crank is cracked, it, it starts a little rough to me. flinging around and you, it'll have wiped a bunch of these bearings out. Which they look good. They look good. I mean, obviously they're worn, but like you guys say, they got a bunch of time on it and kind of abused. She's not nearly as hard on her as I am. I guess the only thing that would have been better than that is if it did have a broke lifter. But, I mean. 
No. <laughs> no, no, like inside the plunger or something. Like, what? Oh, yeah. I no. Just, like the wheel? That's yeah, like the no, worst thing. No, 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 they're not the wheel. No, no. I'm I'd almost not. rather break a rod than break a lifter. No, it's no, such no. a mess. And let's see, the other area these blocks are known to crack at is like in between yeah. here, right? But I don't see anything. I mean, again, you would mag it. The last block. But um, you don't see anything. Mm, no. I, well, I don't think... cracks in here. Yeah, I've seen them crack here. I've seen them crack here. Actually, I've seen one crack from here all the way to here and all the way to here. Mm -hmm. So then when you took the crank out, this piece of the block yeah, came out it? like a yeah. piece of pizza. Oh. And uh, the managed. cheap way to mag it is uh, hit it with some water, let it rust. And... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will show. Yeah, it will sure. show. It will show. Dave, Dave cleaned a stock block. And he was getting ready to assemble it, and he like got busy, like cleaned it, and went in, in the next the next day, and it was fucking. You could see the line. Yeah, no, that that actually will do it. I actually haven't ever tried that, but a bunch of my blocks out in the boneyard, you know, I'm go out there to smoke a cigarette or something like that. And you're looking like, oh yeah, that block's cracked. That's why it's out here. It's got a big old long rust line on it. Like, oh shit, that's actually a thing. Yeah, Manny's here telling me it, it broke. Yeah, it broke the whole. That's line why out. when she builds her nine five and I do mine, it's gonna be a shelving block and stuff. Why? It's, why it, even the iron blocks just they're great, but they're too brittle for the amount of power you can make nowadays. You know, ten years ago, like yeah, maybe not so much. You know, like. But yeah, they were great. You know, you, ten years ago, everyone wanted a thousand horsepower. Yeah, or fifteen years ago, or whatever. You know, nitrous motor. You can't make enough. But nowadays, man, you put a blower on something, it makes forty pounds or whatever. Jeez, it makes a lot of power, and it's it's just too brittle. The iron, and it's not the dart. It's just iron. It's, it just ain't the way to go. Aluminum has some give to it. I've never seen a nitrous motor crack. Not that it couldn't, but it's I've never seen one. I don't think they make enough power. I mean, you make a lot of power with a nitrous steel. I mean, you know, you, you can't make a 2,000 horsepower small block on no amount of nitrous. There's no way. Yeah. But you can with a blower, easy, you know? You make damn near three. Yeah, four times. You, you can make three to four times naturally aspirated horsepower with a turbo. Depends on how much boost. The, the, the kind of half-assed rule of thumb is for every atmosphere you put on the motor, it'll double the horsepower. So like 15 pounds, 14.7 pounds is an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So if the motor makes 800 naturally aspirated and you put 15 pounds of boost, it's probably gonna make 16. And now if you put 30, it's gonna make another 800. And then if you put a, you know another 15, put 45. And you know, nowadays you can G put uh, BGs, 70 pounds of shit. BGs make yeah, we, we, uh, we built Scott Oaks's motor back, way back in the day when he first built his Pro Street car. I mean, this was like not long after he got rid of the True Street black hatchback. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was 15 years ago or something. We did a small block with CFE storm heads, cast manifold, put it together. They take it to Dot while I was dyno it, and I think it made, I got a picture of the dyno sheet somewhere, it made 48 pounds, and on Dot while I was dyno it made like 28.50. And that was like 15 years ago, man. I almost making 3,000 with a fucking small block. And nowadays, this stuff's better, you know? And, and 44 pounds ain't shit nowadays. I mean, we ran 75 on Giuseppe shit, you know? like. It's a lot. We ran 56 on Doug Smallwell on his turbo small. There's you know? 50, we have 50. And that was 50 years 52 ago. 52 on, on, on Eddie's Coyote. Yeah, yeah. On a single 106. And we want to put a 110, he thinks it'll make 65. Yeah. I'm, dude, I'm gonna, I'm not afraid to boost nearly as much as I am like compression or, or nitrous stuff. Like a bit, I wouldn't be afraid to put, if the compression's low enough and the tune-up's good, man, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about putting a hundred pounds of boost on something to be honest. No, but once we, you get the head gaskets, when we do out. the stock block, the other stock block for the mare, because it, it, the blower is not huge, so do you want to you want to make it like ten to one or eleven to one or how much boost is it going to make? Twenty. Twenty. It's a bigger motor, it's not going to Yeah. It makes, if, it, if it only makes 20 and 24. No, we well, think about it. The mare, the, the stock if motor is, has a smaller head, which is more back pressure, so it's, that's more there. And it has, and it has smaller cam. And so it'll make like 20 pounds and you're running Let's just on, say 20 to 24. You're running on like intercooled cube? No, it's no intercooler with nitrous on C16. That, that's the tune up right now. Man, with no intercooler, I'd probably not try to gain any power compression, to be honest. 40, 3, 250. And the gasket's probably 60 by What did nine. I say the cylinder head was? 59. 50, 59. 59. Uh, so if the gasket's like a 4, 
for 100 bore probably by yeah. 060, then that's 13 cc's. Um, uh, negative 0.016. Uh, how many cc's is that down on the piston? That's what I don't know. It's the only thing I don't know. It's probably you should have it though. Top land. Man, would I have called out a spec? You designed that piston, so. Right, that's why I'm seeing if I had um, the street race piston spec. Ford street race car. There it is. Car, there it is. Yeah. So the spec that we asked for was 20. <laughs> Whether or not they are, the only way to know for sure, unless they, because usually the piston manufacturers will give like a data sheet out and they'll say how many cc's the dome's supposed to be. And they're usually really close. But if you don't have that at all, um, or there's no way to call like Wiseco and get the job, you know, tell them, hey, it's this job number, what's the CCs? What do they actually turn? Because sometimes you ask for 20 and they make the dome, you know, um, you, you say, I want the dome to be 20. And then, but I also need the valve pocket to be this deep and this deep. And, and I, I, obviously right there, they can't make it any taller. There's nothing left. They can't make it any far this way. It hits the head. That one they could have made a little taller, you know, because they cut the flat spot. But sometimes by the time they make the dome as tall as they can, it's like, well, it's 18. That's as much as we can get, you know, with, with our normal clearance profile, unless you do a digitized deal. Um, so it's possible they're not 20. They could be a little smaller, but probably otherwise they probably wouldn't have cut that flat spot on it. Um, the only other way to know is you got to put the piston in a hole and, and CC it, you know. Yeah. Um, but let's just assume 20. So let's let's just count on it being 20, supposedly. So if it's 20, it was like 14.7 to 1, the way it's the way it's. And if it was 18. And if it was 18, it'd be 14 and a quarter, you know, something like that. So, if so we'll cut it and say it was 14 and a half. So... Like a 19. 19, yeah, so say 14.49. So if, if the heads are 64, it'd be 13 and a quarter. If they're oh, 68, it'd be 12.4. So 67 is... Six, 67 would be 12.6. That's probably good. Unless you put a thicker head gasket on it. No, let's just leave that. We'll just get a 67cc head and... Let it eat. Let it eat. Fuck it. That's your compression. Two points less than what it was before. So you had to lose 40 from that, probably. It'll but probably gain 100 from what it was. But, but maybe gain more power back. Because the head being so much better, it may, it may yeah, it'll probably gain some back. But just, just apples to apples. If it run, if it run like it did before, with less compression and better slow hair, I'm fine. Yeah. Kind of... The high port's really good slow hair, because the port's race and the short turn's so much better. So that's a big deal. So yeah, 67 to make it 12.6. This is what it needs to be.